This is the all new Alma Linux 9.3. The latest iteration of the popular Linux distro is now out and this is a philosophical rebirth of the Linux Titan. After Red Hat making it impossible to provide a free platform for deployments, Alma Linux developers are back with a glorious new update with one major change and many smaller ones. And this is a resounding victory for the open source community. Red Hat had recently made big changes to its source code ecosystem, essentially killing CentOS which was one of the biggest Linux distros since the beginning of times. Then Red Hat went on to sanction source code restrictions on derivative distros like Rocky Linux and Alma Linux making the lives of many people very difficult. It was a gambit to kill Alma Linux once and for all and push Alma Linux users towards paid Red Hat subscriptions. But Alma Linux has defied all the challenges, made big changes and released Alma Linux 9.3 as a testament for its resilience. Really, Alma Linux developers deserve huge props for the way they have faced these challenges and the way they have bounced back with the bold statement that is Alma Linux 9.3. And they have laid out a solid plan for the future of Alma Linux. So let's jump right in and take a deep dive with the all new Alma Linux and have a closer look at the performance, stability, software availability and finally see how this server specialist distro performs as a desktop workstation. Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the V editor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will level up your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. Alma Linux is a server and cloud centric operating system and these operating systems tend to have either a command line interface or very minimal graphical user interfaces. But Alma Linux provides a workstation installation option which gives us the beautiful GNOME desktop environment and full set of desktop capabilities. We get GNOME 40 here. GNOME comes in its full stock form here but the desktop background is from Alma Linux and it looks absolutely stunning here. GNOME 40 is a very polished and premium desktop with a very modern approach to user interfaces. You have the dash here which houses your favorites and running apps. Then the app grid here has all your installed apps here. You can also search for your apps, files, settings and other things directly from this global search. Pressing the windows button brings up the workspaces. You can switch between your running apps here and also you can organize the running applications based on your work. Keep your work and play in their own separate desktops. While Alma Linux doesn't provide the latest GNOME desktop, it still provides a relatively modern version that looks gorgeous and feels great to work with. Alma Linux keeps everything stock and that's a very good choice. GNOME 40 series has a refined workflow and it's very easy to be productive here. You can group applications according to work. The system has a fantastic search that lets you get what you want quickly. And it's all a genuine pleasure to work with. So in the user interface department, Alma Linux scores top points. Alma Linux 9.3 has phenomenal performance delivery. Alma Linux is a system designed to provide the best in class performance across a range of hardware. High performance is expected from server operating systems as high system performance is going to save a lot of money for businesses and Alma is industry leading in this regard. I want to particularly touch up on the performance improvements that we see between Alma Linux 8 series and the newest 9.3. Alma Linux 9 series gains a major jump in the performance section. Alma 9.3 is more refined and more streamlined when compared to series 8. In all kinds of tasks, you can expect better performance here. Physics simulations, media encoding and decoding operations, Z standard compression and decompressions, they all perform slightly better on the newer Alma. Python and PHP code benchmarks have shown significant performance enhancements in the 9 series when compared to Alma 8. Benchmark score gains of around 10% can be seen. If you are looking into Alma for server deployment, going with the latest series is going to give you a performance boost. AMD processors receive huge performance boosts on Alma 9. There has been a lot of work done to improve the performance of RHEL distros on AMD EPIC processors for servers. This also translates over to gains on AMD based desktops. 
to sum things up here, Alma 9.3 shows more than just incremental improvements in performance. It's noteworthy actually. It delivers a fantastic performance across a range of tasks on a variety of hardware. And even in my experience using it, Alma Linux was super responsive. The work done in making Red Hat Enterprise Linux deliver a boosted performance is well reflected in Alma 9.3. Just great. Alright, we have some big, big changes to talk about in this section. The world of Linux has seen massive shifts in the Red Hat camp recently, and that has had serious implications for Linux giants like CentOS, Rocky Linux, and Alma Linux. But before we get into it, we have to understand how the Red Hat family of Linux distros works. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Fedora, CentOS, CentOS Stream, Rocky Linux, and Alma Linux are all part of a broader ecosystem of Linux distros. But these distros can be considered as a family of distributions that is particularly focused on enterprise and server use. These distros are mainly used in servers to deploy websites, applications, and businesses. All of these are available for desktop usage with Fedora being the popular one, but servers is where these distros thrive. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the central piece in this game of chess. Red Hat Linux is a commercial operating system developed by a company called Red Hat, which is in turn owned by IBM. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is known for its stability, security, and extensive support, making it a popular choice for enterprise environments. Red Hat Linux is a paid Linux distro with a subscription model where you have to pay for support. Fedora is a community-driven free and open-source operating system. It is sponsored by Red Hat and Fedora serves as the testing ground for Red Hat Linux. New features, packages, technologies are first tested on Fedora and after refining and stabilizing them, they are included in Red Hat Linux. Fedora is upstream from Red Hat Linux. In a way, Fedora is the mother of Red Hat Linux. Originally, CentOS was an independent rebuild of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat Linux was a paid distro. CentOS was essentially the same thing but free of cost. So CentOS became very popular in the enterprise market as it came with all the advantages of Red Hat Linux minus the cost. In 2014, CentOS joined forces with Red Hat but still remained as a free version of Red Hat Linux. CentOS was downstream from Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But in 2019, Red Hat brought about a major shift in how CentOS worked. Instead of being a downstream rebuild of Red Hat Linux, CentOS was rebranded to CentOS Stream and put between Red Hat Linux and Fedora as another testing ground. This was to provide the developer community a glimpse of what was to come in Red Hat Linux in the future. But this move took away the option of a free, stable, Red Hat based distro for servers. But the Linux and open source community is not something that should be taken lightly. In response to the CentOS fiasco, two distros, Rocky Linux and Alma Linux came up to provide a free of cost open source rebuild of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But the war was not over, no, not at all. Red Hat announced major changes to its source code licensing, essentially saying that Rocky Linux, Alma Linux or anybody else could not rebuild from Red Hat Enterprise Linux source code and distribute it. While Red Hat is a business owned by IBM and as a business it wants to kill its competition and maximize revenue, I get that. Now I'm not a lawyer but I don't understand how they can draw such lines. I don't think forced licensing even allows Red Hat to make such rules. I don't think that's legally possible. They even said that Alma Linux and Rocky Linux are clones of Red Hat Linux that hitch a free ride on all the hard work done by Red Hat. Now I don't think this is true. Rocky and Alma do contribute upstream to Red Hat Linux. They do submit pull requests and bug fixes. Anyway, this put Rocky Linux and Alma Linux in a disarray and threatened their very existence. In response, Alma Linux has come out with a solid game plan that's gonna forge a brilliant future for Alma Linux. In place of being a bug-to-bug -bug recompile of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Alma Linux henceforward is going to be a binary compatible alternative for Red Hat Linux. Instead of building from Red Hat source code, it's gonna draw from CentOS stream source code. But anything compiled for Red Hat Enterprise Linux will run absolutely flawlessly on Alma Linux. That's the aim and that's what Alma promises to deliver. This also brings about some very noteworthy benefits to Alma Linux. Independence being a strong one. The most striking benefit here is going to be that Alma Linux can now provide bug fixes and patches irrespective of whether they are accepted upstream by Red Hat or not. This is very important because Red Hat Enterprise Linux is not exactly the most proactive in fixing bugs. It's notorious for neglecting bug fixes provided by downstream distros. Now Alma Linux is going to be more free here. 
Alma Linux will still be a system that's very close to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's going to be very similar in fact, but it's not one-to-one -one compatible with Red Hat Linux. Rather, an application binary interface compatible system. Everything that runs on Red Hat Linux will run on Alma. Alma is going to continue its legacy of being a phenomenally reliable and stable operating system that can be used to deploy the most mission critical applications. And it's going to have its own identity that's going to be even stronger. And for desktops and personal computers, Alma Linux provides a very interesting computing experience. As a computer science student, I've used Red Hat Enterprise Linux for a long time, even for desktop computing. And yeah, you're not gonna get a fresh experience, but the stability of these systems is going to be undeniable. Alma Linux, because of its Red Hat lineage and association, brings you very well-tested and stable software packages. Since Alma is a servo operating system, it strongly emphasizes stability. So obviously, you're not gonna get the latest versions of anything here, not even close. From a desktop usage point of view, Alma Linux offers a good selection of software here. You can download browsers, utilities, office suits, and a lot more software directly from the software store here. But the software selection is rather limited and you can add and use EPEL here, which stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux. This repository is maintained by Fedora to provide packages that are not available in the official repositories. For desktop usage, this repository is a must-have as without it, your Alma installation is going to be restricted to a very small number of packages. Add EPEL and you'll be fine. There are a few other repositories available here like RPM Fusion. But for personal computing on Alma Linux, I highly recommend that you consider Snaps and Flatpaks. Alma Linux supports both. You can install applications as Snaps and Flatpaks here, but first, you'll need to enable them here. Alma Linux is an enterprise-focused distro and as such, is going to provide very old packages. If you can work with those or if you prefer the stability of those packages, great. If not, just go with Snaps or Flatpaks. It'll vastly simplify your life and you can also use the latest and greatest of everything here, despite this being Alma Linux. In fact, if you mostly use Snaps and Flatpaks, Alma Linux is going to provide a very solid base underneath, so check this out. All in all, you can expect the enterprise Linux kind of software availability here on Alma, but if you choose to try Snaps or Flatpaks here, the entire game changes. Gaming on an enterprise Linux, why not? I'll tell you why not. The thing is, Alma Linux is not something that's meant for gaming. You can game on it if you absolutely want to, but it's just not meant for it. Firstly, by default, a very small number of games are provided here. Even if you add EPEL repository, you're gonna get a very small set of Linux games here. But you can get a ton of games from Flatpaks and Snaps if you enable those. There, you're gonna get anything and everything you want. That would be the preferred way of getting games on any enterprise Linux, I think. Steam 2 is not available here in the repositories. You can add RPM Fusion non-free repositories to download Steam or get it from Flatpaks or Snaps. Once Steam is installed, you can download thousands of Linux native games from it. You can also play top Windows exclusives like GTA 5, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Cyberpunk 2077 and many more using the Steam Play feature here. Another reason not to game on Alma Linux, at least for me, was that installing Nvidia proprietary drivers was too much of a hassle. While the default open source drivers are great, there is a huge performance difference between open source drivers and proprietary drivers, but it's very cumbersome to get them installed. Alright, gaming on Alma Linux is possible, but it's going to need some work to get everything set up. Might just as well get something else. Alma Linux is a community driven project that has a huge community behind it. It also has a solid internal structure of members to represent that community. While that Red Hat influence does reflect here, the views of the broader community are well represented here. Alma also has a growing community that's very active in helping out users with their issues. But at times, I did find a lack of resources in getting things sorted on Alma Linux. But Alma being a Red Hat Enterprise Linux related distribution means that some guides, how-to articles, troubleshooting material written for other distros like Red Hat Linux or Rocky Linux can be applied here. But with Alma taking a step away from Red Hat, this is not going to be true for very long. The thing is, your mileage may vary. But as someone coming from Ubuntu camp, I thought there was a small gap in help material online. Alma Linux has a very exhaustive, detailed, yet streamlined installation procedure. Alma is a server-centric system, so that is to be expected. Alma needs to provide full control over the installation and that means more options. Firstly, you download the ISO file from Alma Linux's official website. Now there are a ton of options here. 
for most people, you'll need to download the Alma Linux OS DVD ISO from the Intel AMD x86-64 section here. This image is for desktops and laptops. There are many more images available here, but this is the one that you need to use for PCs. Go ahead and download it. Then flash it onto a USB stick and live boot into it. Alma Linux uses the Anaconda installer. This comes with exhaustive options here. The usuals like partition selection, language, user creation are all present. Apart from this, you can fully configure the software that is installed on your system and what kind of Alma Linux system you want installed on your computer. Alma is a server-centric system. So the default installation installs a server but with a simple graphical interface. You can configure this. I chose the workstation option which installs Alma Linux as a desktop operating system with the GNOME desktop. You can also install additional things like an office suit, additional GNOME apps and internet utilities like an email client directly from here itself. There are additional options here for security management. Now these things, don't change any of these if you don't know about them, just leave them as they are. Once all these things are selected and configured, you can start the installation process and the whole thing takes around 20 minutes. You don't need to be connected to the internet here. I agree, Alma Linux may not be Ubuntu level simple in the installation department, but it's still surprisingly simple for such a complex solution. In most things, you can easily understand what to do. Most drivers for Wi-Fi hardware and GPUs are pre-installed with Alma, but you'll need to manually install NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Only NVIDIA drivers are not pre-installed here, but apart from that, pretty much everything is golden here. Overall, Alma Linux has a straightforward installation procedure, but people new to Alma Linux might need a little bit help understanding things, so I'll link the full installation video in the description below. I wouldn't be exaggerating in saying that Alma Linux has a huge challenge ahead. The path that they've chosen is not an easy one. But I'm a firm believer that every challenge is an opportunity to evolve, as at times, evolving to the next level is the only way that you are ever going to overcome that challenge. Technically, Alma Linux is going to have a lot of work to do. Maintaining binary compatibility with Red Hat Linux is going to be intense. But there's a bigger challenge here, that is maintaining and gaining the user's trust that Alma is going to deliver a stable platform for their businesses. But if Alma Linux stands tall and overcomes these, then Red Hat is going to get way more than it bargained for, and not in a good sense. Alma developers have laid out a solid plan that's making a lot of sense and even feels like a great direction for Alma. I'm very happy the way they've handled the things and I'm rooting for Alma Linux. If you feel the same way, definitely wish them the best in the comment section below. Alright, that's it. If you enjoyed our deep dive with Alma Linux 9.3, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out this fantastic distro called LMD6. It's taking the Linux world by storm and it's unlike anything you have seen it, so absolutely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.